Hello, wonderful family. Another glorious day and another beautiful opportunity to share the word with you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Today I want us to study from the book of James chapter 1. Uh, we'll be reading from the King James Version. We'll read from verse 1. James, or actually the name there is Yaqub. Well, we popularly call him Jacob. Or pronounce it Jacob, but it is the, the name Yaqub. Yakub is servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. My brethren, this is an uh, is enjoining us to do something now. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Stick a pin there. He's saying that when you come into different types of trials, that word temptation there is another word for trial. When you come into different types of trial, like you should count it all joy. But do we do that? Do we, do we look at it as another opportunity for God to manifest his glory in our lives? That is that we have so much confidence in God that he will bring us over it, that we rejoice and say, yeah, another chance for my father to show himself strong on my behalf, for us to crush the head of the enemy. And uh, suffice it to say that Alas, most of the time this is not the case with us. Rather, we suck, we're bitter, we, we, we don't take it for anything good. We, we get into a sulken and depressed state, saying this shouldn't have happened to me. But scripture is saying that we should count it all joy when we fall. That's, and look at it that we fall into diverse temptations. It's not as if we choose to get inside those temptations. We fell into them or we fall into them. At those, at those moments, count it all joy. Why would you be joyful in, those, in the situation that is trying you? Because you know the outcome. You know that your father has not left you there comfortless. Your father has not left you there at the mercy of the enemy. For he says that for with every temptation or every trial, he makes a way of escape. He will not suffer you or he will not permit you to be tempted beyond that which you are capable of handling. And when he says capable of handling, that is, he has given you, put resources at your disposal with which to deal with those trials. He now says in verse 3, knowing this, that the trying of your faith, so is your faith, walketh patience. So what is he saying in essence? That any trial is there to try your faith. Your faith in what? Your faith in God. Do you have confidence in God? It is there to test and to try what amount of confidence do you, that you have in God? And he's saying that you should count it all joy because it is God who ultimately deals with the thing if you have confidence in him. He says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. So you, be, you patiently watch, uh, patiently and with an attitude of endurance, watch how your father deals with them. That is, you put your father to work. It's not... It's, it's kind of a semi-active uh, process. You make declarations based on your father's word and the angels of the Lord carry out your father's commands to deal with that trial and temptation whilst you patiently wait for it because you know the outcome. It says, But let patience or endurance have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. So that trial would only harden you in, in God. Knowing fully well that he's going to deal with this thing for you. you. He's giving you the resources. He's put at your disposal spiritual beings to assist you to deal with this. You only need to know how to release them. Knowing that in making declarations, it is your father's word that they are hearing coming out of your mouth. Think about it. God bless you. Hallelujah.